The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome, everyone, to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. Once more into the breach, do we go, dear friends? And of course, uh, well, there's a little bit of something for everybody in this market. As we said the last few days, if you don't like the direction of the market, just wait five minutes. And sometimes that's all it takes. We're up seven points on the S&P cash. I couldn't find anybody by probably 9.15 or 9.30 that would have bet me a dime for a donut that uh, we would be up by the end of the day. I'm pretty sure I couldn't have found anybody. Um, we had a lot of people singing, it's the end of the world, and we'll play that here in a little bit. But uh, hey, you know what? All the times they said it's the end of the world, eh, it wasn't the end of the world. So what do we have going on, and how is this going to work out, and are there any clear signals? Well, the answer is sort of, kind of, no, and we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, volume, pretty good for a day like this, 2.6 billion shares. You would have liked to have seen this uh, low-volume test. We got down to 18.93. I would have been 100% long if we would have gotten to 1885 and this thing would have started moving higher. I just wanted a test of 1880. I, how come they couldn't give me? That was just 13 more points lower. I would have been all full boat long on the light volume we had this morning. In fact, I think we had less than about what, 400 million shares by 10 a.m. The volume was not really indicating that we're going to have a strong downside in the first 30 minutes and or that the retail traders were basically throwing in the towel. But, um, you know, I was hoping that we would get that lower test in so that uh, the risk reward would be what we're looking for. Uh, a lot of stocks testing lower uh, prices with lower volumes. And maybe this is all we get. Maybe not. I can't quite pull the trigger here. I would love to see this thing. Um, in fact, I'm more than willing to sit on my hand. But I think we're going to get a test of that 1880, 1885 area on the S&P cash. I think the volume is going to be low. I think the pullback is going to be on low volume. And that may set up a fall rally that could take us back up to uh, eh, maybe 2030 or something. Um, and, uh, of course, the opposite is we get down to that 1885 and we see tons of volume come in and that's the market breaking. And we'll be headed back down probably to, what, 1780, something like that. So we're going to have a very interesting market over the next week. I am particularly kind of bullish, but uh, I am willing to change my opinion if the facts do. I just... With all those stocks testing uh, lighter volume, I thought we would get some kind of decent uh, res resolution to this in the next few days. That we didn't get it today does not mean that we will not get it. Um, maybe I'm going to miss some of this move to the upside, but I, it just makes me think that we've got some level of a retest to come back down to. And on that retest, uh, probably lighter volume. We couldn't break it today. Makes me think we just get one more test and finally wash out uh, the bearishness. I remember that song, you got to wash that. Oh, it's going to wash that man all out of my hair. But uh, it doesn't work for me because uh, I'm kind of a guy, a dude. We don't sing songs like that. But I kind of remember that. But I was going to wash that bear all out of my hair. How about that? That may be well, another parody out here. Uh, you can't always get what you want. Well, that one would, would be a good one, too. Suggestion from the uh, den. And maybe we don't. But I'm going to have to get that clip now. But sometimes you get what you need. And I haven't got what I need either. So for all you that want to uh, give me a few suggestions 
from lyrics in great songs. But uh, uh, I have dig digressed about it. Bring me the head of the false prophet, Jim Cramer. Well, that was for Andy. He told me he was going to listen, so I got to tell him that. But uh, we got to get this party started. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Of course, we've got a hurricane going up uh, the East Coast. On this day in 1963, Hurricane Flora crashes into Haiti, killing thousands of people. Huge storm, which also killed large numbers of people in Cuba, wrecked havoc elsewhere in the Caribbean, was one of the most deadly hurricanes in history. On October 2nd, the hurricane, now a Category 4, struck Haiti. The island's coastal villages were decimated by the winds. Most damaging, though, was a 12-foot storm surge, which is almost always the reason of uh, huge problems. It overwhelmed virtually all the homes and other buildings near the ocean. It uh, killed an estimated 5,000 people, uh, died in that disaster. And I, in statistics, or I took a statistics class, actually, it was uh, one of the things we did go back into is how most people can't ever figure out you know, they're always sure that there's more hurricanes or more tornadoes or there's more anything over time. And one of the things that they'll teach in statistics, uh, or at least uh, one of my professors did, uh, was uh, he had a uh, he had a kind of a big square board with a uh, sheet over it. And everybody threw their darts. And, of course, most people threw their darts kind of in the center of it. And then he took the sheet off, and it was a map. And, of course, people randomly throwing at darts around. But, uh, you know, they kind of clumped in different places. But was that, any, was that meaningful at all? And we did the statistics on it, and we found out, no, it was just random. Just like a lot of other things. People are always thinking that they've got a good bead on it. Statistics uh, basically tell you the difference between whether something is anecdotal or if there's something to it. But uh, statistics and learning about hurricanes, weather forecasts, uh, tells you a great deal about how you can be fooled. I know that last year, was it last year or the year before? I think it was last year that uh, all the people that were for, uh, forecasting hurricanes after uh, working on their models for 20 years, threw their hands up in the air and ran away. They said that there was absolutely nothing that they did that was uh, worth of value after 20 years and uh, then decided to go, I don't know, probably work at a beach bar somewhere, uh, something that they could do per, uh, that was actually useful for humanity instead of a wildly claim we would have massive amounts of hurricanes because of X or Y. Um it's kind of like uh, also a uh, meteor. Um, you know, we get one every 50, uh, maybe 100,000 years. And it'll hit, the United, uh, it'll hit the world and we'll have some destruction. But you, if something is that rare, there's no way you can actually ask, uh, put statistics to it. And unfortunately, so many times it is the butterfly effect. But uh, on this day in 1963, once again, a lot of people were killed. And once again, people will try to predict these kind of random events. And, of course, they're so random that you don't have enough data to actually predict them. Um, we are getting better with our models. Uh, but, again, there's four different models for the hurricane going up our east coast right now. And maybe one of them is right. Maybe all not, none of them are right. But guess what? Some things are just too chaotic to actually forecast. I think maybe we've got a little bit of that in our markets today. Um, other things going on. Uh, Macau's biggest junket company admitted last night that it had lost around $130 million so far this year in a dire filing. I don't know where you go to fire, uh, file dire. I think they were just a filing that was dire. Maybe this wasn't written correctly. Anyway, we're unsure how to cope with this vicious circle, which has devastated Macau's VIP gaming business, it said, according to the South China Morning Post. I read it all the time. 
Anyway, uh, the firm cited government measures to track money going to the gambling havens and the devaluation of the Chinese yuan, the new regulations on junkets, higher roller financing firms as the reasons why their business was being devastated. Uh, that first part of it is probably the most important, and I think a lot of people have missed it. But um, if you used to go to Las Vegas in the 50s and uh, you were running around with a rack, a rat pack and you had a hundred thousand dollars worth of of uh, chips you just went up and you got a hundred grand uh, now of course uh, there's an IRS agent probably waiting to do a colonoscopy for you uh, and that's basically what's happened in China a lot of people were washing money in and out of uh, of uh, of um, these uh, casinos and it's an easy way to lose to somebody at a poker table, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and uh, suddenly they've got the chips and they're cashing out. It's become a much bigger problem for China, and that's what they wanted to get rid of when a lot of people were talking about them not liking to spend money. It was that they were washing money, and it was incredibly tough for the commie, uh, the tri, I can't even say it, chi -coms, the Chinese communists that run the country, to uh, track everybody down. And if there's one thing that they hate, and that is not knowing everything that everybody does in everybody's business. Uh, but they, much like the IRS, are on everybody's and in everybody's business. And uh, it continues to be horrific. I think we saw a little action in the um, casino stocks over the last few days. But I think a lot of it was uh, just the... Um, almost throwing in uh, the towel of these junket companies that were putting together junkets to fly to Macau. Anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, what else do we have out there? Uh, that couldn't have gone much worse. Oh, this was the unemployment thing this morning. There was a guy out here that was supposed to be uh, a big economist for some Wall Street firms. I just, <laughs> I just kind of liked uh, how he said it. It couldn't have gone much worse. Basically, we missed on all counts, September headline, August revisions, and hourly earnings. The only silver, li uh, silver lining is a stable unemployment rate. Well, we were talking about statistics before, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up a little bit more is I'm watching some of the people in statistic blogs go through the government uh, numbers, and it seems like we get the surprise every three, four, five months uh, where it looks to me like I just don't think we can trust the numbers, whether they're good or whether they're bad from the government anymore. Maybe they're not any better than the Chinese numbers that the CHICOMs uh, put out, but uh, it's kind of hard to tell. Anyway, I was looking at the numbers over the last few months. None of them added up to me. Uh, some people that are true statisticians um, think that our numbers here from the U.S. government are junk. Um, it's hard for me to not kind of believe that when you look at them. I don't know if this is true or false or just made up when they can't lie anymore. It's hard to tell. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Tiger T. TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video giving you crisp.
crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 and now we're going to go right to marie from erie pennsylvania happily named for october i think how are you doing today, Marie? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just uh, curious. I'm sure you may have mentioned this some other time, but when you look at the volume on the Dow Jones Industrial Average and you look at the volume on the DIA, um, how do you reconcile the differences between the two? Because, like, the Dow is going up on light volume compared, you know, to the yesterday, but the DIA is not. And um, just curious. Um, a great deal of what I've seen over the last probably 30 days looks to me like a lot of high-frequency trading in some ETFs and indexes and not a lot in others. I see. So I think we've got a lot of, of just random trades going up and down, popping in and out of them, and some ETFs getting in no action at all, although their underlying stocks have great volume. I so, uh, well, I just I see at, at the S and P and the SPX. It's the same thing. The SPY is doing better than the SPX. Right. I think yeah. that there's a great deal of high frequency trading that's come back over the last thirty, maybe forty five days. Okay. If and you were going to follow the volume uh, to help you determine which way to trade, would you just follow them uh, like the? Uh, SPX instead of the SPY? I would follow the ones that have the largest differential between volume. So right now I'm looking at the DIAs, okay? Okay. 
So what we had was the September 1st low at 14 million. We had the September 29th low in 10 million. Okay, so I would then go to the next chart and see which ones had the uh, light or the uh, biggest differential as a percentage change between those two. Which one uh, other one were you talking about? I was looking at SPX and SPY. <clears throat> See, the SPLY went lower, but it had uh, 250 million shares compared to about 178 and 160 uh, million shares when we have back in there. Percentage are probably pretty close out there. That's not going to be big enough for you to change. Um, to me, you know, you still, or a lot of purists will say we'll have to go back and retest the August 24th low. I would like to see one more dip back in here and maybe even see lighter volume that we saw than we saw on September 29th. I may not get that in this move. We may have a light volume move up and then volume comes in. It really blows out those lows. If you wanted to be bearish, that's, I think, what you would be hoping for is volume back up. We have stronger volume though at least in the spies today on the way up well that's and why i was looking to go short but i was saying now hold your horses kid maybe there's too much strength in the market here today that's well i don't think i don't think it's just today okay um we had a long we made some good money out of it yesterday um in the newsletter we're out we're all cash okay it, I, I knew coming in this morning that we were probably going to have some action. I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know how we were going to react to it. Now, later in the day, I mean, to me, some of the things you wanted to be looking at is probably less the indexes and maybe some of the larger markets, like the um, what did the TLT do today? And uh, this thing did exactly, I think we were talking a couple of days ago to somebody else, and that was this gap. Right. I mean, you, you fill the gap today, it's going to do it on no volume. That kind of tells you that maybe we're washed out on the TLT. Yeah. Then probably go to look at something like the dollar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this thing was, uh, the dollar was down to 15, or excuse me, uh, down to 95.22. And then it's 95.88. So it was down, it's down 31 cents. So it was down, it's down one third of what it was, right? Mm -hmm. uh, lower and it's kind of moving back up um it's hard for me to not look at this as some kind of washout here so you know we'll we'll watch the tlt at the end but you mean it got into the say, gap when huh? you say washout what do you mean by that like a dead cat bounce or no it just means that yeah well it means that that's, that's probably the end of that move the end right? of the down move the end of the up move well in the tlt right? It yeah. was going up, right? Okay. okay. So we got a reversal in that. Mm -hmm. I think we get a signal out here in the dollar that this thing, you know, they threw everything and they could add it earlier in the day. You want to hang on through the break? Sure, sure. Okay. We'll have more discussions about this with the very spooky person from Erie, Pennsylvania, when we come back. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They they believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back, and I think we're still talking to Marie. Are you yeah, there? Still okay. here. Well, let me ask you this. I'm all cash. Is all cash a position that you can take? Well, right now, I was long the market yesterday and got okay. out. And um, I was doing that as a short-term trade. Um, okay. And I had some short positions, and when things were down this morning, I sold. You covered? Yes. Okay. And so I'm sitting here saying, do I reload on my shorts? Or is this thing going a lot higher? That's why I was looking at some of the volumes, and I was saying, boy, I don't know, I'm kind of confused. Because, like, when I look at the comp, it, it looks like it's going up on light volume. But when I look at the Qs, it doesn't look that way. Yeah, um, well, there is, I, a lot of, there is a lot of divergence. I, I, feel, I feel for you, but my position right now mm -hmm. is all cash. Yeah. So I, I don't see anything out here. You know, a lot of people, when I started trading, the first thing was that if uh, a stock tested or an index ta uh, tested uh, the volume of a previous high on 10% or less, that was it. You go ahead and go long or you go short. And over time, I figured out, well, if 10% is good, can't 20% be better? Uh, maybe 50%. And if you listen to my show any time at all, 
Most of the time, I'm showing stocks out there to test at highs or lows on 50%, not on 10% or 5%. I want to see signals that are pretty clean and vivid, and okay. I don't see any now, and that's good enough for me to sit on the sidelines. I suspect, but, I suspect that what we have here mm -hmm. is a real knot, and this thing's going to bounce up and down and chop a lot of people out, and probably by Wednesday next week, we're going to have a pretty good signal. But, uh, you know, I grew up in the Midwest, and the saying was, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Yeah. I, I think you can say that probably into the mid part of next week. At mm -hmm. that point, I think we're going to have washed out a lot of people that were long, a lot of people that were short. Um, I've seen trading rooms, especially early in the 2000s, that were wiped out in markets like this in a matter of weeks. Where people that have been in making money for years, to get in it and i'm not saying that that's this market but i'm saying it certainly it has a kind of a flavoring of that and um on when i see that or i feel that i'm more than willing to sit back and be all cash okay, so, so I, I, I i would i would say that if you don't have a and i've always put it almost in a legal term an abiding belief that the market is going up and down or or down then what's wrong with just sitting on some cash well, I don't have any problem with that. Cash certainly is a position. I, it, it is. And to me right now, especially if, if you could have found anybody at 915 this morning that you would have bet that you would have been at these levels today, they would have said you were insane. Yeah. So to me, if I'm wrong this morning, I'm probably going to be wrong this afternoon, and I'm probably going to be wrong Monday. Eventually, those things work themselves out. And I just want to see the next... I'm willing to wait for the next bus to come along uh, that maybe doesn't have enough or have the same amount of uh, criminal element on it as the bus I'm looking at, right? Uh, these right. guys look kind of shifty. I'll just wait for the next bus when maybe there's not an, uh, as many shifty people on it. And that's kind of the way I'm looking at it now. I don't see a lot of people that give me a, a, a lot of belief either up or down. I am bullish in this market. But I think to be bullish and put money into it, I need one more test around that 1880, 85 level. So okay. that's what I'm hoping for on light volume. But I can't really be short here. I could possibly be long and maybe be missing it. But I would much rather be have a much better and much. Uh, uh, how did uh, why call, um, uh, Jesse Livermore say it? A much more prof, uh, probable profit. Uh, than now, which I really just don't have a good feel for. A lot of yeah. stuff going on. But it's uh, kind of like the ocean. You get a hurricane out there, you get all the storms, you get everything kind of uh, beating around for a while, and then it kind of comes back and it's clear again. And I just think we have kind of a little storm going on. That storm will be over in a few days, and it's going to leave us with a much better picture. And in the meantime, I can think of about a lot of other things and ways that I can become a better trader why I'm sitting on cash. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. You bet. We're going to go right to uh, Frank in Gloucester. How you doing, Frank? Hey, pretty good. How are you? Fantastic. So, I'm sitting on a pretty good profit on SLV from today. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's any follow-through there? You know, this silver's gone up and down and up and down. It's been a crazy yeah. uh, uh, months for silver. Well, you're starting to finally get kind of a little bias to the weekend on buying gold and silver. Mm, yeah. I think I think it's just because people had been doing that with crude and couldn't get anything out of it. I see. And to me, in fact, I was talking to Andy Heck about it on Tuesday or whatever. But there's kind of a term that insiders talk about called the fear trade, right? Sure. You buy you buy this on the weekend, you sell it on Monday. Huh. So, okay. you know, on a chart basis, what would you want to be looking at? You want something like 8.6 million shares today, yeah. and you've got about seven. So the volume's not bad out here. Right, I could, right. I could make a I could make a case that you have a nice little pop back in here. What What really makes me nervous about holding silver is that the dollar index is now just off 32 cents. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. And this thing, every time it's been sold off, it rolls right back up about 96.30. And gold and silver just kind of lay there. 
you know, the okay. entire week. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's my answer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's to me, the, uh, I don't know. In it, like I said, I think we're probably going to get some resolution in this market, whether it's gold or silver or the markets uh, or individual stocks in the next couple of days. And okay. at this point, if I don't have a clear designation, if I've got a profit, I'm probably taking it. How do you see the spy going into the close today? Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have I some mean, dice? That, that uptrend is holding. That, that, do you, yeah, do you have some dice? Uh, yeah, so I got a twenty-sided I think, I, I, to dice. To me, <laughs> it's a coin flip right now. There's too many things going on, too many uh, moving parts, and yeah, yeah. you know, you've got to think. If I if I was forced to bet today, yeah. I would say that we closed maybe a little few points higher than today. This really looks to me like it caught a bunch of people that were going short early in the morning, uh, and the thing reversed on them, right? And yeah. they're going to cover by the close. So, okay. Okay. you know, this could just be a little market gas, could be a, a bear trap, and maybe you get one or two days. Yep. Uh, to me, I, I still think that there is a lot of money to be ma made, but it's going to be made when I have an abiding belief that I have an edge on the market. And the only edge I think I have now is in the next 10 minutes. You know, <laughs> okay. an hour from now, well, a much tougher market out here. I think by next yes, Wednesday, sir. I get that test of 1880, 85, and I'm going to be very clear about what I can do. But right now, you know, you get these choppy markets, like I said, I've seen trading rooms just ripped apart by everybody going short in the morning, going long, and then having the close rip down on them by the end of the day. And this is the kind of markets when you get fast markets uh, that it's very easy to give a lot of your cash back. So yeah, I'm glad to hear you say that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it, it's, I have no better idea than a lot of people. I was listening to Steve Rhodes. He kind of echoed the same thing, maybe not the same way. Yeah. But, you know, th these are volatile markets. They don't last a long time. Um, we were long um, the uh, generator company for the hurricane yesterday. Yeah. Uh, going uh -huh. into yesterday, I think we bought it at twenty-seven seventy-five or something. It popped up to thirty-one fifty or thirty-one bucks or something. So we sold it. Well, it's back down in the twenty-sevens today. Uh, can anybody give me a rhyme or reason? Yeah. Um, yeah. On why stuff does yeah. that, I I do know the answer to it now, but I didn't at the point. I could see that it was weak, and it was the Home Depot guy came out right after everybody started saying stuff, and he said, you know what? We've got a ton of these generators all sitting around. We're moving them all to the East Coast right now. Sure. So sure. The, the idea that there weren't enough generators that the prices would go higher, that would be it. All it took was one CEO out there saying, oh, we got all the generators in the world. Um, and that was it. And yeah. that's about it, it. Nothing fundamentally changed about the hurricane. In fact, it got stronger. Sure. But they blew, they blew the stock apart away with one guy's um, discussion. Yeah. Yeah. If they do sell those generators, I don't see how any it's any different. Gen, uh, Generac's going to have to go back and build a whole bunch more. But that's all it takes in this market right now is a hint uh, uh, of something not going the way everybody wants, and you get a, um, a huge reversal in it. Yeah. So, very, very anyway. fragile. Yeah, it, it, it's brittle. In fact, yeah. I was thinking about it earlier today, and I was going to write an article. I've written it in several different ways over the years. But, yeah, F-16 fighter yeah. <laughs> was the first fighter that was, was uh, what was known as unstable. It had to have, it literally had to have three different computers always uh, automatically moving the surfaces to keep it stable and keep it from literally busting apart in the air. And there are stable airplanes, and all the planes up to that point had to be stable because the computers weren't fast enough to sit there and always be fluttering the controls to keep it stable. But the market isn't that good, right? We don't have all these people automatically working on it. And it's very easy when you get something that's unstable. Uh, all you need to do is have one of those uh, or two of those computers not match, and it automatically ejects the pilot out of the plane. He didn't have a choice. <laughs> so, or at least that's the way that used to be hooked up. Yeah. Literally, if you didn't have two of those three computers giving all the same information, 
then they just ejected the pilot because they knew what was going to happen. And that right. was the hey, plane. I, I got I to gotta check under my chair. I think you just <laughs> gave me the rest of the day off. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> it, it's just an, un, it's an unstable market, and yeah. I am more than willing to sit on the uh, on the side and on my hands for the next couple of days. Like I said, these things normally resolve themselves very quickly in a couple of days, one, two, three days. Yeah. And then you get a you get a trending market out of it, and you can make a lot more money than I can by making wild calls for up or down yeah. 100 S&P points in the next couple of days. Because most of the time, we get two days along, and you know we're probably in the same spot we were. Yeah. yeah but it's it's just chewed a bunch of people that were both long and short out of the market fairly quickly, and that's the job of a market, really, sure. a lot of times. Sure. So if you can identify these times when you're unsure, then just wait until you're sure. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. You bet. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. You bet. That's it. Uh, uh, sometimes you just don't know. But I've always put it in my newsletter that when I put a trade in, I want to have an uh, abiding belief that I've got a direction and that I have a uh, the odds that are better than the flip of a coin um, although sometimes, you know, flip of a coin is $1 up and $10 down, you want to think of it, of the magnitude also. But um, unstable markets are very much like unstable airplanes. Um, you, if you're always in there manipulating the controls, maybe you can keep control of them. Uh, in fact, when I was learning to fly, one of the most interesting things was uh, I was flying in a little uh, Cessna 150. And if you've never seen one of these things, it is kind of the uh, training plane for everybody else. But uh, the, the, my flight instructor was trying to tell me about how, uh, how airplanes are stable and how they're not stable. And he said, okay, I'm going to put this plane into a, a crash dive. And he said, uh, I want you to close your eyes and then open them up when I tell you to. So he puts it in a dive, and he says, okay, now I keep your, uh, keep your uh, blinders on and tell me what you should do. I said, well, I have no idea. He says, do nothing, right? And the plane started to dive. It, it, uh, the airspeed went up. The airspeed going up, up over the wings made the plane start to have lift. The nose started to come up. It started raising a little higher. It went a little higher. The airspeed bled off. The nose started coming down. The airspeed picked up. It, the nose started coming back up. The nose started going down. And we had these kind of little oscillations. But within about 30 seconds, I hadn't touched a thing. And the plane was flying flat uh, and normal and uh, straight again. It was going down maybe a little bit. Uh, it wasn't perfect. But uh, if I would have grabbed the controls and started yanking and yanking on them, I was probably much more likely to rip the wings off the plane than anything else. And he says, sometimes you're better off just doing nothing. And that kind of always stuck with me through, uh, through life and other things. But when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll look at some more stocks. I've got a few of them out here. But again, I'm not real bearish on the market. But at the same time, I would like a much better opportunity and a little more information before I place my trades. We will be back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we go into the home stretch here, 1932 on the S&P cash, almost 3 billion shares on the consolidated New York Stock Exchange tape. And what can you say? Um, going into Friday, volume is a little bit better than most Fridays. But, of course, we had a little bit more action than most Fridays. We had news. It didn't, uh, the market didn't react like most people probably thought it was going to. We've got a lot of different things going on here and, you know, like I said, I just don't have a real good feeling. And I think if you ask anybody at 9.15 this morning where the market was going, they would have all told you 18.80 for the close out here or lower, I think. Um, but uh, it didn't happen. And, uh, you know, you just have to look at the markets. We you know, last week we went through just how many that were uh, testing uh, previous lows on uh, light or no volume. And, you know, I don't see a great deal. Most of them have bounced out here. 
I would be thinking a lot more about going uh, higher if these things had done a little bit better. But, you know, some of these don't look all that bad. Uh, I would have liked to see that uh, the August 24th low on Affometrics, AFFX, um, the August 24th low is $8.65, 1.1 1 .1 million shares. You know, we've got a close that's back in that trading range by, um, or down out of that trading range by six cents. Man, I would have liked to seen this thing close back in the trading range today. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But I mean, you got no volume, you got three kind of dojis going off here to the side. Um, unfortunately, what you do also have is that volume after all that, after this time, um, the energy really started to expand, which makes me think you get one more bounce and then one more pullback in most of these patterns out here. And if that next volume, uh, next pullback has very light volume, then we continue to see maybe some bottoms. We also saw a lot of stocks that didn't have any volume blow out the previous lows on next to nothing. Uh, we talked about uh, A-Ray, I think, on Monday, maybe. Uh, this thing had 1.8 million shares on August 20th. Uh, for its big beam day out here, it broke it with 1.1, 1.4. Never the kind of beam, but it hasn't closed back above that August 20 uh, low, which I want to key on. Um, when we have other stocks out here, some of them look pretty good. Coca-Cola, we brought this up, probably was one of the better looking stocks out here. This thing gapped up on the 31st of what's that? Uh, July with 13 million shares. Got back into it with 4 million shares, and yeah, it's drifted up, but uh, pretty light volume for the push up here. I think maybe you get one more push back into this gap today, and of course, we talked about the TLT. Uh, certainly looks like it uh, went into that gap and got rejected. Uh, we've got other stocks out here that I've been hoping uh, would bottom out, like uh, Kamiko in the uh, um, uranium business out here, August 25th. Uh, $12.38, 3.4 million shares. This thing broke with uh, 2.5 million shares. It's trying to get back into this trading range. Right now, it's maybe 5, 10 cents underneath it. We would want to close above $12.38. Are we going to get that? I don't know. I don't like the volume today, though. I would have liked this thing to actually have volume today and get back into that trading range. I also dislike the fact that the energy coming back down did expand over that leg up from that August 25th low. And these are the patterns. That is no volume at the bottom, but the energy did expand uh, from the, the last high down to this last low. And my guess is that you get a bounce out of here. If the volume comes back down one more time with light volume, then maybe you have a buy. But that means I've got to sit on my hands for a little while longer and maybe even get bearish if volume does increase. But at the moment, it's time for me to sit on my hands. We will see you Monday, same bat channel, same bat time. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you in the 4 o'clock hour of Tom O'Brien. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.